snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the snake part. Stony angry. <clears throat> so y'all have come up with a plan that you're going to use Alexander, who the vampire doesn't know what he who he is or what he looks like, to try to lure out this vampire. <clears throat> Yeah, that wasn't there, a, like, 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 I'm sorry, oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, what'd you say? Uh, y'all had come up with the plan that you were going to use Alexander, whom the vampire has not seen, to right. lure out said vampire. I mean, should we, okay. should we call, yeah. All right, so y'all have tried calling Alexander, but Alexander's not answering the phone because, like any intelligent person, he's not swimming with his phone. <laughs> um, so, Alexander, where where are you? Uh, where are you swimming? Are you in the the bay, or are you in a pool, or what? Sorry, I thought my mic was being weird. Anyways. Um... I am at the bay, just taking laps in whatever circle I can figure out. Okay. All right. So after much searching, Stony, you and the others have found Alexander swimming in the bay. <laughs> so what do you do? <laughs> I take a picture of him swimming in the bay. <laughs> All right. You just snap a picture of him swimming. That's a majestic picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's pretty majestic. I look back at Jake and I'm like, found a profile pic. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight the urge to shoot him with another trank dart for old time's sake and just swim with him. <clears throat> okay, so you jump in the water. So, um, all right. So for you, Ruben, I'm gonna need an athletics roll. <laughs> Oh no, I, I might because, be just terrible at swimming. Because this is something you're a, you're a werewolf, and <laughs> werewolves are not really known for their swimming capability. Ooh, have fun. Okay, um... so um, you're doggy paddling, and you know it's like Alexander's like an Olympic swimmer. He just, <laughs> he was born for this. And it's kind of like watching a five-year-old trying to keep up with their dad who's just running way faster. You know, that's that's very accurate to how I actually do swim, so... No, don't worry, me too. Um, Alexander, you notice that there seems to be an injured fish or something across the bay? Because <laughs> you can sense that. So you... <laughs> It's it's almost like a sea lion is is in distress, you know. <laughs> Are you hungry? I mean, you know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just like figure out what the hell's going on. <laughs> like, who's trying to swim with me? Because no way, no, like no way. It's just like <laughs> some random sea creature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't, it definitely doesn't smell right. Um, yeah, it, it's too close to the shore. <laughs> you, you've got the smell of, well, I mean, sea lions are often pretty close to the shore. Um, oh, sure. You know, like, you, this this smells like wet dog to your your senses. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> so, right, so you see Stoney snapping pictures uh, on his phone. Jake, what are you doing? Um, I'm just, I'm, this is, this is, the, this is the beach, right? Like, like at the edge of a beach or something? Yeah, uh, uh, it's a stony shore, so, you know, like the okay. Pacific Northwest. Right, so I just picture him just standing over, like, kind of hanging back, yeah, hands in his hoodie pockets, just standing there, just like, well, I'm here. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Well, by the way, if you want an image, I'm uh, oh, I can actually post that in roll twenty. Oh yeah, I Hang can. On. I think. No, I can't. So I'm gonna post it to Discord. Okay. Uh, here's what the beach looks like. <clears throat> Ooh. 
Oh, that's like my kind of scenery. <laughs> Lots of driftwood. Yeah. So, all right. So, Jake's standing back, Tony snapping pictures, and Ruben is swimming like a lame seal. <laughs> okay, well. Um... <laughs> First off, so I, re I realize it's like everyone, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I am. First, gonna go out of the water. Okay. <laughs> and then go over to Stony and be like, what are you doing? Gotta get some cool action shots for your new profile. My new <laughs> what? <laughs> how, how, okay, how, let me ask this question real fast. Like, what does your character look like coming out of the water? Is he, like, is Alexander in, like, pure human form? Uh, yeah, so pure human form, just, like, standard blue. Yeah, um... he's, like, he's not even, like, fighting it. He looks like Austin Powers. He's, like, yes, yes, like, taking pictures with the camera <laughs> as he's coming out of the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, like, Alexander's just, like, what are you doing? Gotta get some oh, no. profile pics for you. <clears throat> Why do I grand, need grand plan? <clears throat> I don't care to fill me in. <laughs> yes, you're Brian Roberts. So I'm who now? <laughs> at, this, at this point, um, Jake's gonna like just walk up and um, kind of like he stands there, wiggles a bit of sand off the bottom of, of his boot, and just looks up and just says. How do you feel like dating a male vampire who kills people? First off, why do you think I want to be with a vampire? Secondly, why? Because he's killing people and we and we need you to play like you're wanting to date him so that way we can get him in a trap. Well, this is not how I expected to spend my day, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Stoney just starts sending all the pictures to Ruben. <laughs> what, what are you well, sending them to me for? I, I'll get started on the uh, profile then. You know, um, we could have just said the word catfish. It would have saved a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Sure would have. Conversations are not my asking, strong suit. Especially since you're asking a bear shark to be a catfish. By the, by the way, by the way, get an at, get a fate. By the way, Ruben, get a fate point for just not doing well at swimming. Um, <laughs> and Jake, for that conversation's not my thing. Get a fate point for that. <laughs> Love that. <clears throat> uh, that's that's be okay. All right, <clears throat> so you all, I guess, adjourn to um, adjourn to more private uh, area and one that's more friendly to Jake's electronics. Correct? Yeah, I mean, we could just head back to the to our little area, our little cabins. Yeah. All right. And I would hope everyone fills me in more, you know, like, on the way there. <laughs> so my character's not just like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> yeah, Ruben does. And he puts some emphasis okay. on turtles for some reason. Okay. <laughs> well, there was, like, the art place that we went to. <clears throat> they took the heart of the mountain or something like that, right? Well, what happened was the serpent folk took the heart of the mountain. That's it. But okay. if you can, if you can get back, if you can uh, somehow get back what they lost, then you can you can restore. They'll give you back the heart. Okay. Thank you. And a. And following a lead basically just led us to that vampire. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. We tried to chase him down, but it didn't work very well. 
All right. <clears throat> so, Stony, you're driving, right? No, Stony is not driving. <laughs> All right, who is driving? That would be the one that can drive. That would be me. <laughs> All right, Jake, I'm going to need you to make a notice roll. Oh, boy. Excuse me. That, that's fight. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Okay, well, Jake, um... You don't you don't see a lot. <laughs> you're just like no, no, no. Actually, you're you're fiddling with the uh, with with your MP3 player on your phone. Uh, How dare you? Trying to get it, trying to get it to actually work with uh, with the car, but it's not cooperating. <laughs> okay. So y'all get back to the cat to the house. Oh, we probably oh, missed god. something important. Oh god! <laughs> I would say like no one else would notice anything, or like no, no, everybody else was pretty much you know it would just be something the driver would notice. Okay. Although you know, Stony, if you want to take a look around the property, use investigate. You could. Uh, totally. Oh my gosh, okay. she's <laughs> Now, would you like to succeed at a cost or simply fail? Uh, I think I'll just simply fail. Okay. All right, everything looks shift shift to you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, go. Oh boy. So, <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Y'all go back into the house. Jake, you're getting on your computer, right? Yeah. All right. You uh, you set up the... Um, you have set up the... Uh, the uh, profile. Everything appears to be nominal. So, Ruben, what are you doing? Well, considering it's their house, he usually doesn't have a lot to do, <laughs> unless there's <laughs> animals there. Um, no, 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 no animals here at the moment. Um, in so that yeah, case, I guess he's just having Alexander open his shark mouth and counting his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm down for that. <laughs> okay, Alexander shifts into his war form, and you are now counting. Oh my god, did the teeth ever stop? <laughs> um, it is... Honestly, you're a werewolf. You are a monster yourself. And honest to god, this shark's mouth is terrifying. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, that's so many teeth. Imagine what he can do to my face. <laughs> If one falls out, I'm keeping it. <laughs> um, and also considering that these will do the same damage silver would do to you. Hmm. By the way, here's a... Hang on. In the Discord, here's a beauty shot of a Rokea war form. Oh, boy. <laughs> I would expect that. more rows of teeth. They usually have rows. Well, we're not staring into its mouth, unlike poor, <laughs> um, unlike poor Reuben. This is like it's reaching for me, dear God. This is the last thing I'm going to see. Uh, you're, you're playing Roki a dentist, which is probably a new one on my World of Darkness cheat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else to do. <laughs> By the way, Ruben, he has excellent teeth. They are in pristine condition. He just compliments those teeth. <laughs> oh, why, <I> thank you. <laughs> okay. So. 
By the way, three. The countdown is three. Oh no. Okay. There's a countdown. Um, <laughs> uh, oh no. So, Stony, uh, what are you up to? Uh, I've already got you. Uh, Jake, you are setting up the profile, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> make a computer role or academics role. Yeah. Uh, academics. Oh. All right. So, yeah, you've set up a, re a really successful profile. Um, you've really taken into account what um, what Mr. Descara wants. All right. Just get just and just give the phone. Alexander and tell him to swipe left on everyone else and swipe right on the vampire. <laughs> right, Alex, uh, as you walk out of your room, right. you see Alexander in like 18 foot tall giant shark form hunched over <laughs> in your living room. Huh. Well, that's disturbing. <laughs> and for educational reasonings, okay? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure. I, uh, I didn't think that Ruben was into that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to crawl into his stomach too? <laughs> no, you see, I'm not a full cannibal, okay? Who said anything about cannibalism? It, it's monster eating monster. Anyway, here's a phone. <laughs> Thanks. Your profile's in it. Okay. I couldn't think of a comeback for that. <laughs> the phone looks <laughs> ridiculously tiny. In, like, this massive claw. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... To, first off, I need to be able to use this. Turns goes back to human form, of okay. course. <clears throat> and just swiping left until you see... Uh, assuming... With someone over your shoulder. So you tell them when to strike, right? Yeah. So, just swiping. And Jake's just going to go over there and shoot his cube. It what? And Jake's just going to, like, go sit down somewhere and fiddle with his Rubik's Cube while, while that is happening. Oh, I okay. guess Ruben's going to raid the fridge. Okay. Uh, I need yes, someone over my shoulder, some... please. <laughs> there's some really, really tasty food in here. <laughs> Two my rounds just... remain. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. I think uh, Stoney's going to go sit out on the front porch. Okay, excellent. You go sit out on the front porch. Um, <clears throat> make a notice roll, Stoney. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, ah. that's good. Okay. As you're sitting there, you know, I picture Stoney sitting outside, you know, taking in the breeze, feel, feel, uh. smelling the fresh air. You notice there's like a pair of, there's a, pair, there's a set of tire tracks that don't belong to anybody's vehicle that you know. <laughs> Are they like leading up to the cabin or... Oh yeah, they've led up to the cabin. Looks like uh, as you get out, do you get out and start following them a little bit? Yeah. Looks like somebody got out and, uh, you know, uh, stopped at the phone line and the junction box and all that. You notice that on the uh, on the telephone pole, it looks like a fresh pair of climbing spikes has been used. Can I just? I can climb, right? Make an athletics roll. <laughs> that was what I expected. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have equipment, then it's hard. Climbing telephone poles. <laughs> okay, so you, you nimbly you nimbly shimmy your way up there. <laughs> And now the last part of this challenge is making a crafts roll. <laughs> oh boy. Now the difficult you've got to beat a four on this one because uh, no. you're not trained in telephone technology. No, I'm not. <sighs> Oof. Rats. Would you like to succeed at a cost or fail? Uh I think 
because of this, he I'll I'll succeed at a cost. Okay. Um. You don't know much about this stuff, but you do know that someone has installed some kind of a box that probably shouldn't be there. Um. Hmm. If I whistle loud enough, would they hear me? I'm going to say yeah. Okay, so he's going to whistle. Maybe like he's got his own special whistle that like, Jake would know. All right, Jake, you hear uh, Stoney's shrill, high-pitched, most annoying whistle. <laughs> yeah. I'm already on my way. <laughs> Ruben follows, still carrying the food. Yes, Ruben, I you have like the best plate of cold cuts. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, the actually, really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole plate with me. It's like face just like buried into the phone. <laughs> okay. So, the plate um, outside. Is, okay, so you you guys, are, uh, Ruben is chomping down on those cold cuts. Um, there's some tomatoes on it too, so it's really nice. Um, <laughs> Alexander's like phone. Um, <laughs> Jake, you now hear, you are now standing beneath the telephone pole, Stoney, sitting at the top of it. I, I'm looking down at it, like, there's a black box that I don't think belongs here that's here. Can you, can you throw it down here? Yeah, I guess I'll just rip it off. Uh, if you do, then you don't know what it's going to do to the phone line that's of the what, internet. Yeah, that's what, like that's why I called you out here. I'm like, I don't know if you want me to do this. What's uh, going to happen? I'll get the ladder. Ladders. Like a smart person. <laughs> well, like... Jake gets the ladder. By the way, Stoney gets the fate point for just shimmying up that pole. <laughs> All natural. That was, that was intensely that's, fun. Like, you got to get back to, to nature, buddy. <laughs> I this is this is near the cabin. This isn't the woods. Okay, so you climb up there and you immediately recognize it, Stony. Someone is monitoring your incoming and inbound and outbound uh, internet activity. And whoever's doing this, they have some money. Who'd be pissed a box off like this would usually <laughs> set you back seven thousand dollars. Can you? You're a smart guy. Can you reroute it to bounce off of like somebody else's internet? I can. I, I can try, but I'm going to need my tools, and those are in my room. Oh, I get, I'll, I'll stay, get him. Stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them just like running to go get him. <laughs> climbs over Jake down onto the ladder. I, I picture Ruben staying that, that around a giant mouthful of turkey. <laughs> <laughs> He's just run, running, trying to balance his plate. <laughs> By the way, you guys say saying... uh, you broke up. Oh. Wait, who? What was that? I think it was Stony. Oh yeah, I was climbing over Jake down the ladder to go grab his tools from his from the house. Okay, yeah. So you don't roll to climb ladders. Um so oh, yeah, yeah, you just go down, you grab Jake's tools. By the way, Alexander is completely ignoring everything, so doesn't know exactly what's happening. All he knows is that he hears a lot of shuffling and moving around. Okay, all right. So, Alexander, you you uh, you get a message. Oh. On the phone. Oh. Oh. Um. A rather handsome-looking uh, uh, looking fellow with uh, 
with pale blonde hair is like, hi there. And this one was like, oh, hello. Oh, wow. And proceeds to respond with, hi. Would you like to uh, get together for a drink tonight, Brian? Yeah, I'm down. Cool. You get into Portland much? <clears throat> Wait, what? Do you get into Portland, the city? Oh. Um, Your profile yeah. says you're in UG. <laughs> oh, yeah, I come here, like, every so often to visit some friends. Nice. All right. Um, and you're getting the uh, typing thing. So, okay, let's get back over to Jake. Yes. Jake? <laughs> So you want to reroute this thing, right? Yeah, uh, I feel like I feel like they would have a monitor on it. So if we rip it off, it could damage a lot of other things, or mm -hmm. they'll, they'll be alerted that we're tampering with it. Um, so just going to reroute it, leave it there, and make them think that they're uh, monitoring what they're trying to monitor. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to need you to roll a crafts roll for this. So I do not have crafts on here. Um, then just roll your mediocre skill, <clears throat> uh, which is like the zero level ones. Um, I don't do you have. have a, I don't have a mediocre. I think it's um, the one that's directly um, under what, what skills. What you? Like you yeah, roll the yeah, four um, DF under skills. Yes. Thank you. Took me a moment to find it on the character sheet. The same. <clears throat> so yeah, just roll 4DF. However, the good news is you just have to beat a minus two because you're so oh. smart at this. Oh, good. All right, so you succeeded. Ooh. <clears throat> if it was if it was like Stony trying to do this, it would be beat a five. Uh, but for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so yeah, you managed to reroute it, and um, yeah, you you sent you sent it up to uh, up to uh, Mr. Mr. Johnson's farm up the road. Um, so they just get know, a bunch of going... tractor stuff. Well, no, not tractor stuff. He's actually a giant Star Trek fan, so it's going to be a lot of Star Trek stuff. Who <laughs> <laughs> is listening in on this? Star Trek and sheep. <laughs> uh, Star Trek stuff, and um, you know, what can I feed raccoons? <laughs> oh my gosh! Because the other thing, old Mister Johnson does is old Mister Johnson. He he just gets on YouTube and feeds raccoons. <laughs> Sounds marvelous. But he videos himself feeding raccoons. Yes, there's a real guy that does that. He is he is wholesome Canadian grandpa's show later. <laughs> no. right. Please show that later. I have to watch it. <laughs> All right. Oh god. My favorite is like he, he takes like eleven pounds of hot dogs out and like fifty raccoons just oh, swarm yeah. the porch. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, so anyway, yeah, you've so the countdown has stopped. Um, what was going to happen will not happen. Congratulations, oh. y'all! Yay! Oh, uh, good job, everyone! <laughs> Yay! I'm useful. All right, I so didn't do anything. You have a Eight to go to scan. Well, hey, you are eating. You are the real MVP. You're eating those uh, those cold cuts before they go bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are the chances that they saw what we were doing before we realized that they saw what we could be doing? 
Well, you probably need to check the house for listening devices, uh, cameras, etc. Yeah, it's like Stoney's like gone and kind of like paranoia mode and is like just straight sniffing out everything you can try to find. So you can right after okay. this all ends. Look, looking to see if there's like any it. footprints that don't need to be around. <laughs> yeah, so basically after all of the site commotion, I sound just like, hey guys, I got a date. <laughs> Uh, you're supposed to meet him at a place called Scandals, and uh, it is near Powell's City of Books in downtown. We should probably make sure that's the right guy. The, the, oh, it that's is. The vamp- okay. Oh, right. you recognize the son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what time is it? Um, It is around 1 30 in the afternoon by the time y'all have gotten through all these shenanigans <laughs> okay so there's no way that this guy is up right now then hmm maybe hmm. sounds like a conversation we should be having <laughs> okay so uh, you're discussing there's no way this guy can be up <clears throat> All right, then, who is this person who wants to meet at a bar? I mean, maybe he's got, like, people that, like, you know, know his taste and... Maybe he's got, like, vampire insomnia. I mean... I don't think that's the case. (laughs) Well, um... I would say, guys... (laughs) Sorry. Um, well, I'd say you guys come along with me, maybe, and we can figure out who it may be. Well, I mean, they're, you're meeting tonight, right? So obviously, well, that, yeah, that's gonna be fine, you know. Yeah, but... but it may not be him. So, or if it is, it may be bring, mode, bringing right? friends. Like, would we know anything about like a vampire's like day to day operation? Like, do they do we know if they have like if if ghouls are a thing? You know what I mean? Or is it who just has a like... lore role? Uh, who has the lore skill? Um, I do actually, not. I have, I, I have lore. I have lore, but it's like average. Yeah, I have fear. All right, so you could actually give a plus one to Stony's role. I would love to do that. All right, so you don't have to roll, Stony. <laughs> Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you want to succeed your cost or fail? I'll nah, fail. Isn't that important? <laughs> okay. So, so you still need to get information for your failure. Um. All right. So you're pretty certain that some vampires who have fed on the blood of fairies can actually move about during the day. Oh. Mm. Okay. Take that for what you will. <laughs> All right, so you do tell us this then. So, I mean, I guess he could be up if he fed on a fairy, but... Is well... a population around here? Who knows? You've never even seen a damn fairy. You don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't know. I mean, the, th- the thing is, like, most of, most of what everybody's lore skill usually is representing is like popular occult literature, you know, stuff you find at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> right. <laughs> the gotcha. internet. How much does the internet really help us with this though? That's the real question. <laughs> well, how much does it help you finding things about werewolves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a lot. No, it's not that helpful. <laughs> Media's said, got some fun facts. You said he turned into a snake, right? Yes. Would we know what type of vampire that is? Um, make a uh, make an academics roll, Ruben. All right, academics. you're kind of searching the internet, looking for it. Oh, this is the thing I do well in. I can tell. It would be this. All right, so, 
So as you're searching, you find on the Wayback Machine this weird um this weird uh old it's like gone now i mean it's a defunct website called shreknet um and shrek meaning the uh is the german word for terror but supposedly according to some conspiracy theorists uh it was a a secret um <clears throat> secret network for vampires Hmm. Um, you found the deep web <laughs> the vampire no, deep no, no. web this, well no this isn't this wasn't the deep web this was just on the on the web uh supposed to be a a, a um role play website or something like that uh but what you what you find is there's a reference to snakes and vampires on it and once again, it's not complete. But what you find is a uh, <clears throat> what you find is a reference to something called the followers of Set. Set like the Egyptian oh. Set. Yeah. Oh. Or you think? So the the gist is that they their beliefs make them make them able to turn into a specific type of creature. It's possible. Hmm. I mean, we turn into a different kind of creature. Well, yeah, but not because of our beliefs. We don't yeah, follow anybody Australia in particular. Like, yeah, that's right. Just generic, uh, genetics, generics. What? <laughs> I mean, there is Gaia, so technically, I guess that that does go along with the same sort of thing. <clears throat> Yeah. So yeah, well, the followers of Set. However, the last time anything was done on this website, it was 1997. Hmm. Oh hey, my birth year. <laughs> oh dear lord. <laughs> um, and the, it's kind of interesting because the only other thing you find on here is right before it went down, there was something about. Um, it is awake in India and something about a week of nightmares. I'm guessing they had that that week considering this uh the shutdown right after that. Well can we search the interwebs of what happened in India in nineteen ninety seven at this time and see what happened? And I'm gonna look up um, in- facts yeah. about set. <laughs> Okay, uh, so you look up um, that date, 1997, India, there was a massive chemical spill and a whole lot of people were killed. Dang. Oh. But what if it wasn't it wasn't just like any kind of chemical spill? Like what if just maybe our vampire is part of part of it? All right, so um It's all right. Um, Jake, do you want to try to get in on this? Because you're the only one that might be able to find it. Um, I yeah, I can I can definitely give it a shot. Um, also, it is like the it's it's 2020 in the game, right? It's 2020 in the game. Yes. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah, but I can I can uh, give give uh, the search a shot okay roll your academic wow okay nice so you do have to go on the deep web for this but you uh you find a um you find a strange account and it's badly translated through Google Translate. You have to run it through Google Translate from Hindi. Um, but 
basically you find that there was a in North India there was an outbreak, a strange thing, um, where something arose and slaughtered thousands of people. Um, and uh, it was um, the words translated from Sanskrit that it said were reportedly said were blood feed hunger and there is a photograph which uh, um, depicted a creature I can't find it depicted a creature vaguely like this And, um, you know, then there was the weather service reported a massive typhoon hit. And according to some people, there was a, a series of almost nuclear explosions. I'm going to move your... <sighs> One sec. A series of explosions. Yeah. Not just one that's nuclear, but a series of nuclear explosions. That would be awful. And it, 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 was yeah. all, it was all isolated to this area in India? It was all isolated to this one area in North India. Um, I'll talk about your food. <sighs> one sec, guys. Sorry. No problem. And, uh, yeah, the town, it occurred near was some very small place called Bagalpur. Called what? Bagalpur, which Bagalpur. I'm going to... <clears throat> oh, okay. Hang on one second, guys. Okay. The pains of being in California is that this is around my dinner time. Uh -huh. But I am very lucky to have a girlfriend who literally made me dinner. Oh. Because I was playing this game. That's sweet. Yeah, very. Like, I literally was like mean because she was like, oh, can I come in so I can like give you your food? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. All right. Hi. I'm back. Um, so anyway, yes, uh, that was very sweet. Of them to bring you food. <laughs> yeah, it's very sweet of her. All right. So anyway, Bagalpur. That is the name of the town. All right. Um, not much else. Uh, interesting fact: the last thing that you found is it's not listed on modern maps. Um, anywhere, Jake. Hmm. And, like, even on satellite images, it's blacked out. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Pack your bags. We're going to India. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not like I have a date tonight or anything, but okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, I, am, I am not dressed for India. <laughs> Speaking you of, know what? I will. I will let you guys go wherever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> Stoney was only kidding, but so, okay. we still uh, have, I still have the date. Okay. <laughs> Besides, we've got a lot of issues to take care of back at home with all these companies polluting and poaching and such. That is very true. true. <laughs> got a point. Do we know this restaurant that you're supposed to be meeting? Uh, oh, Scandals, oh, it's a that. gay it's a gay bar in uh downtown Portland. Mm -hmm. 
near Powell's City of Books. Is there like a a dress code per se? Um, generally the guy at the door will look at you, and if he decides you're not good looking enough, he will tell you to <laughs> shove off. Oh boy. Oh, Jake's not gonna have a problem so... getting in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like now knowing that, I signed a list over at Jake and she's like, okay, you're gonna borrow some of my clothes. What? <laughs> yeah, you heard me. You're borrowing my clothing. <laughs> am, am I even gonna fit your body? Good yeah, enough. Jake, Jake, is, Jake is really skinny and you nope. are well, beefy. Well, can be good enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm, make it I'm, work. I'm, I'm skinny, but I have like a bit of like pudge. Like, okay, you know. but, but I thought he was just like, really you tall. Are very, you are a very pretty boy. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> effeminate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, then. All right. I feel like we need to take an opportunity to just like put him in the whole like female clothing thing. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly like to think that that's how like like Stony and like Jake did meet that one way we we did, we we described. But I like I keep liking to think that Stony like saw him from behind and was just like, oh hey babe, what's up? oh that's a guy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the first day of school awkwardness. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, I think... Uh... <laughs> Sorry. You're fine. Stoney's going to go get cleaned up. And try to find something that in his wardrobe that doesn't look like a zookeeper's outfit that's going to help him get into the <laughs> car. <laughs> All right, so you... You, um, actually, for this one, does he have to roll something? Make a rapport roll. Yeah, let's make a <laughs> rapport roll and see how well you do at the gay bar chic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna show. Okay, I'm gonna use an outfit that I'm just wearing today. So I'll just like show you what I mean. Okay, there. That, that's nice. the outfit of today. Nice. <clears throat> All right, so, um, Stoney, you, you got a polo shirt and a and some jeans. <laughs> <Badass>. <laughs> I mean, you could go to a sports bar dress like this, but you know, <laughs> that's do, I, do I pop the collar? Or do I not pop the collar? I don't know what's cool. <laughs> What? You're like, what are the kids doing now? Uh, okay, so like, Ruben is gonna go to like his little commune. There's plenty of gay people there. I'm gonna use resources and see what we dress him up with. Oh my gosh! That's uh, actually, in that case, use contacts. Oh man, I don't have contacts. Use <laughs> cool contacts, and you've got to beat a negative too, since there's tons of gay people at the commune. They're not letting you out without looking good. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> I hope so this goes well. Okay, awesome. So, yes, you are dressed fabulously. <laughs> Skippy, the older the older gay fellow who's there, he's like, you are going to get him. Go for it, killer. <laughs> oh, I'm excited about it. <laughs> First time in a gay bar? Uh, no, actually. Huh. All right, well. None of us should be and... surprised by that, by the way. <laughs> First time in a swanky one. <laughs> well, enjoy the fun, Doc. Thanks, also, you little really, ripper. really try the chicken wings. They're amazing. You do. <laughs> All right, so... So he just like dramatically comes into the door where everybody else is and does a little twirl. No. <laughs> Stoney's clapping. <laughs> now, fortunately, okay, fortunately, Jake and Alexandra, they know how to dress for this, so it's fine. <laughs> 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 it's 
Stody <laughs> looks at everybody, hangs his head. I'm not getting in, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> He can still try. You know what? What we need to do I, is put I you will try. your gun. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. So, moving ahead, you all arrive at the gay bar. It is. It's. Hopping and y'all just actually as soon as you get up to the door, the bouncer looks and goes, "Oh, uh, names, please." Um, I'm gonna go with whatever the fake name was. It was Ryan, Ryan wasn't it? Ryan, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna just go with Ryan. Oh yes, uh, Mr. Roberts. Uh, absolutely, you and your party come in. Um, the VIP room is open to you. Hey, okay. VIP room. Okay. He says, like, kind of, like, nervous smile while walking in. Because you didn't realize that, like, oh, shit, VIP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, you all head into this room. And, um, you know, waiters come and they're like, can I get you anything? Um... Is that seafood you have? They list an extensive array, and they're like, everything is on the house. Oh. Can I get it all? <laughs> yes, you can. Thank you. I may be here for a few hours, guys. <laughs> is this okay. is the VIP room, like, is it open that we can see? You can look down and... on the club. That's the only, like... Can, is there a view from the downstairs up into the VIP room that I can that you'd be able to see? Uh, no, you all were taken to the VIP room. Because I don't want to be in the you. VIP room if this vampire is coming in. <laughs> oh yeah, we should probably do something about that. <laughs> you know. However, a, a another vampire comes in. How do we know? You can smell him. Oh, okay. I was like, can I smell him? <laughs> He's tall. Um, he has kind of silver hair, but a youngish face. Um, really handsome. And he's like, good evening, gentlemen. No, like, um, as I'm going to go through just like a gay panic. <laughs> gay panic? <laughs> That's like he a smiles. court of law thing. <laughs> <laughs> he, he smiles and says, Every, is everyone happy? Uh, are you happy with the food? He looks at your spread Alexander and says, you seem awfully, awfully comfortable spending my money, so I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was your money. Uh, did... It's fine. You know I said everything was on the house. Um, yeah. So, uh, my name is Deacon. Gasp! Deacon. <laughs> And <laughs> at this moment, I know that, that Skylar is kind of shriveling because you probably don't want to fight this guy. Uh, <laughs> Skylar, it's your boyfriend. No, it's, it's the mentor. It's the, you know, very much older mentor guy. But, you know, he's yes. not oh, that into friend. fighting. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, does he like to manipulate. Oh, boy. <laughs> When you're an ancient vampire, you don't need a lot of fighting skills. It's just like I'm an ancient vampire. <laughs> yeah. In fact, that's one of the aspects is I'm an ancient vampire. <laughs> so, gentlemen, I understand you have a bit of a problem with a... He opens a little, uh, little notepad and he smiles to himself and he says, um... A Mr. Alexander Descara. That's the vampire you're looking for. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's the um, Alexander name. Yeah, I was like, wait. <laughs> uh, um, so, Alexander uh, is just like, first I get confused, like, uh, who, what? Who? Because 
I presume the um, profile always had a first name, right? Oh, he said his name was Alexander Descara. Oh, so he did tell me his full name. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I, I just know how to say it apps work. <laughs> no problem. Um, okay. So you have a problem with Mr. Descara. Um, I am a bit of an ombudsman and troubleshooter. Perhaps we can negotiate. You're all werewolves, correct? Well, well not shark. one of us. I get it right, rare shark. Okay, as soon as you say that, you see something that mo that you can tell this guy he's stone cold about pretty much everything else, but when you say were shark, his eyes betray just the slightest glimmer of what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a new one on him. He has never heard of a were shark. Jake's <laughs> <clears throat> over here just like kind of like, you know, yeah, yeah, you're the one that's supposed to be catfishing the dude. Let them know you're a were shark. If we are <laughs> doing freaking whatever. And, you know, I, know. I just, I just can't wait for for Alexander to show up and like look at Jake and just be like, oh, you're the one that left that note in my in my house, <laughs> apologizing for your friends, you know, violating my privacy. Yeah, but you ripped that note up. It's probably fine. <laughs> Yeah, no, you just ripped up that note. I wrote, I ripped up that note, but I wrote a new one saying, "Still sorry about your house, but you're you're a fucktard." <laughs> <laughs> and then there was just a bunch of like turtle back, stuff. He, place, he places that note and the taped together ripped up note <laughs> on the table. And you're like, you were in Mr. Descara's house, correct? <laughs> Jake's just kind of like looking. He has this, this kind of like moment of like looking at it like under his nose with his mouth slightly open like holding he's it's it's this weird like i can't, i find it comical the way he's looking at it but yes. you know i can't describe it and then like I, his mouth just slowly closes and he looks over and just goes that wasn't me <laughs> <laughs> he, then pulls, he then pulls out one of the papers you wrote for school <laughs> And it says, looks an awful lot like your handwriting. Jake just kind of like goes wide eyed and like slowly like tilts his head. Miss Joe Young. Alexander proceeds to say, I was not in the house. <laughs> Listen, I don't know I, what happened. I, I have no problem with any of you. And honestly, I'm here on behalf of the kindred of Portland. We don't want any trouble with your kind. I mean, heaven knows we used to have troubles in the past. Things have changed a lot in our society recently, so we would just like to ensure peaceful relations. <clears throat> okay, so re remind, remind me, um, why were we going after this vampire guy in the first place? Yeah, I was about to the ask The Naga you. want you to chase him out of their territory. Ah, okay. So him he, specifically, he, or because he's a vampire? Just him specifically. Okay, so because I um, remember we were doing something, and I thought it was because he was funding the um, the the people who were destroying the environment. Well, he right. was also doing that, but this is like, you know, this is like a set of politics you are not familiar with. So there's a lot going on that you're probably not privy to. Wait, so, so it's just like vampire um, politics here? Yeah. And Naga, apparently. Okay. So, uh, Naga, yeah. J Jake's just going to sit there and just be like, okay. Hey, <clears> can I, I would out. like to speak. Can I? Do I get a chance to speak? I've been yes, trying to. Yes, you can to. speak, Ruben. Sorry. I'll let Ruben speak. Um, so uh, it, I was going to have him like look at him and say, well, it's not exactly a kindred thing, you see. We weren't after him because he's a vampire specifically. Okay. The Naga want him, actually. Naga. The, the Naga want him out, and he was funding people who were destroying the environment. And the and Naga have I'm our stone. And I'm pretty sure you understand what we're all about. I'm getting a better picture. Um, so tell me. What are the Naga... Exactly. I'm familiar with the Indian spirit stories, but talk, explain it to me like I'm five, as the kids say. 
about most of we know about them is they're like us, but snake. We're snakes. His eyes get even bigger. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I think Stony would kind of cough to he interrupt. Looks- to interject and be like, you know, we're kind of giving you a lot of information and you're not really giving us anything other than a spread full of cold cuts and sushi. Which is a lot, actually. Tell me what you want and I will ensure that the local kindred comply. I want him head on a platter. Maybe just bring him to the Naga. There's so it's, pers- there's, it's personal. There are so many <clears throat> situations going on in this for this one person that we're after. That the, Na- the Naga have our stone. That is our ultimate goal. They hi- they wanted us to take care of him, and we also come to find out that he's funding people who are destroying the environment at the same time. He is also taking lives just to give that information to illegal immigrants coming over the border and selling overpriced to antiques and selling overpriced antiques either which way honestly stony i you you're you i always cared about your opinion and everything but we can't be letting our personal feelings about this be getting <clears throat> what we our ultimate goal is and that is getting our stone so as long as we can get him to the naga if you want it peacefully or however you want to do it we if just we, take we, we just need this done if we take his head to the Naga, then he's, he's gone, right? Problem solved. They can take his whole body. He's, so, he's old enough that if you take his head, you'll be left with nothing but a pile of ashes. Oh. Then we take I mean, him Jake alive. Just, Jake just laid it all out there for him, for Deacon. All right, so <laughs> Deacon, really Deacon, did. Deacon settles back in his chair. Hmm. This is a lot to take in. How well do you know this guy? He flips through his notebook, uh, grins again, says, um, reasonably well. Like, I don't what's, know him personally. What's his weakness other than any, like, clicks his tongue and thumbs over at Alexander? Well, um, all right. So... This is a negotiation, gentlemen. I'm negotiating on behalf of the kindred of Portland. You're negotiating on behalf of the Lupine community. Um, So, in any negotiation, there has to be a give and take. You understand? All right. Completely. So you and this Naga want rid of Mr. He flips back Deskara, correct? Correct. However, it would cause a problem for me if I were just to summarily hand him over to you for execution. What's the problem it causes? It means that I lose credibility among the people. And I travel around among my kind and handle these disputes and problems. Now, I don't have the clout I used to. So I can't just summarily execute someone. What if they don't know you're behind it? What if they do something really wrong? Then they are tried by the tribunal in their city. Hmm. Now, what I can do is I can buy out the interests in these companies that are doing the polluting and work to stop would that be fair? That would be helpful. It wouldn't help us get our stone back, which is why we need him. Well, and I can get him out of the territory of these Naga. But how long will it take? 
I can have his him in a coffin on a plane to Russia tonight. Maybe they'll, they'll accept him leaving. Um, he has lost his Portland privileges. Yeah, what he was doing, business. what he did with the Naga, which we didn't know existed, what he did was to start a war, and the leader of Portland's kindred does not want a shooting war. So now we have to let we have to discuss this with the Naga so they understand the situation because they want him. They don't want words. Hmm. Well, they might be open to negotiations. Let's hope so. Well, gentlemen, I can accompany you. What? What? Is... What? If that's acceptable. You sure you'd be comfortable around a bunch of wear everything? I am very good at escaping your kind. Well, that doesn't surprise me. He was too. Turn to yes, the snake and off the window. We either get very good at it or we stop living. He got lucky. Existing. Very true. Yes, there is often a <clears throat> an element of luck. However, I am coming in peace. And should you, should anyone harm a hair on my head, there will be a shooting war. And it will be all the vampires in North America. I thought you said you didn't have that kind of clout. I don't have the clout I used to. But I am still useful to the status quo. So if you're that useful, why can't we have him? Why does the stake and whatever you say... And on a plane to Russia, how does that, I mean, how do we know that when he gets there, it's just not unstake and you send him somewhere else to do your bidding? Because it's a big world and we're not. The he he actually leans vampire. forward and he says, first off, Mr. Descara does not do my bidding. And if he did, he would be much prettier. <laughs> <laughs> and at least have better taste in art the man's a philistine i don't know what that means you're speaking you're speaking too fancy for me <laughs> but how do i know that he's not gonna just be let loose somewhere else to cause look we i don't look at it as just my area my territory you understand? Stoney. Jay's just gonna like lean forward. Stony, it is a big world out there. If we don't kill him, someone else will. Yeah, well, I'm and sure Russia their has problem. their own ways. Yeah, but how? Like this guy says he's an ancient dude. Like how long has he been around for? And obviously he's gotten good enough to get away. Before. He's more than like, but there's, but eventually their age has to catch up with them at some point. They have to get sloppy at some point. If how were, how old if, are you? That's what that's going to ask Zeke and how old he is. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. What year is it? 2020. Hmm. I, uh, I was born to my second life in the third year of Octav Caesar Octavius' reign. Um... Okay. Just, Don't you just throw his hands in the air like, are you kidding me? <laughs> there's, just this, like, there's just very, very slow, like, head tilt <clears throat> with wide eyes, just directly. I want him chain. dead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what, what is it going to cost? Okay, what is it going to cost us to not have him on a plane to Russia, but in a, the trunk of my car? If I put him on a plane to Russia and buy you some plane tickets, once he's in Russia, he's no longer my problem. And I can rip him apart in Russia. 
look, go do whatever you want with him in Russia. So in Russia. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> you're obviously a very determined man, Mister Conway. I am not here to stop you from doing anything. All I am telling you to do is don't do it here. So okay. So Stony stands up, pulls from his pocket like a map of. Organ <laughs> puts it down in front of him and draws a line and says, Don't cross this, and we're square. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I mean, we're going to drive on the freeways, you know that, right? I, I understand that. I mean, just don't bring any of the, the pollutants and the nastiness into this area. And we're square. If it's kindred controlled, I can guarantee that. I cannot guarantee what the humans will do. That's all I ask. <clears throat> all right. Do we have a deal? And do you really want to go to Russia? I don't. I wouldn't understand a, a lick of what they were saying. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean... I'll go to Russia. Y'all can stay here. Uh, I can call you, right? Like we can call them on a phone and do a video call. If you don't call, do you be beating him up? <laughs> of me ripping him apart. <laughs> You're solving. probably going to need more than just you. He's not easy, but... Okay, me, If you want to set this up, I'm going to need something from you. What do you need? Okay. Getting him out of here, getting your rock or your stone back from the Naga. Absolutely done. That's part of this. I'm going to need some favors and basically, are you willing to help me if I call on you, if I arrange for your ability to destroy Mr. Descara. What kind of favor are we looking at here? He's not going to probably tell us the that. kind, probably <laughs> the kind that involves beating someone to death, or intimidating someone, or just generally things that I can't do during the day. Mm, we could probably do that. I can do that for him. I can do that. I mean, as long as it's not someone completely innocent, I suppose. Usually it's vampires. All right. I'll still be doing background checks anyway. Yeah. Well, good luck. The ones that I need you to beat up or hunt down are not. They don't have identities anymore. <clears throat> Jake's just kind of like smirking. Oh yeah, that was that was the other thing that just popped my mind. The yes. people that he killed that was using the identities for the other people. Yeah, I mentioned that. Oh, you did? Okay. Uh -huh. I just laid it all out for Deacon. Dead. I was like, I was like, okay, this negotiation is about to go really bad if everyone keeps talking and like making him mad. I do here's what's up. I don't we don't like this guy. <laughs> and here's why. So all right. <clears throat> So is this Jason guy today. supposed to be showing up here, or was this you that set this meeting up? I said, well, I, he was. He got hold of a phone. He decided he could. He wanted a snack, and so here we are. So all right, I am going to send him. He's going to think he's going to Moscow to meet other kindred. I'm going to send him to Vladivostok. And where's that? It is at the far end of Russia near Japan. There are no vampires there. Huh. Well, except good. for a few wild, weird ones that I 
would not recommend you spend time with. Fair enough. <clears throat> you think we should bring one of the Naga with us? Actually, you know, that's that, a good that, idea. That sounds, that sounds like an internal affair among your kind. I'm oh, I wasn't asking you, Deacon. Time. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry. He's like, he's just like, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make a deal here. Sounds look like a good deal to me. I don't know if I say it sounds like a good deal, kind of being a vampire's beckoning call, but it's a deal. It's five of deal five of that, that that meets the means to an ends. Well, since you obviously don't mind killing vampires, would you like to kill vampires that needlessly torture and destroy people's lives? That sounds like a fun pastime. Sounds good to me. You you mean like Alex Alexander? No, worse than Alexander. I'm done. I just bite their heads off. Isn't there a movie like this? Was it Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's what it feels like. You're gonna give us like a hit list? Deacon actually chuckles at that. No, generally I'm just going to need you to defend your area against them. They tend to come down out of Canada or in from Mexico. Okay. All right, just let us know when you want one. Fair. All right, I'll give you a local contact here soon. Um, all right, so... So far as the Naga are concerned, Mr. Descara is no longer here. I can give you proof that he has left town. I can give you proof that all of his assets have been liquidated within the hour. Excellent. Very efficient. Aren't the Naga in Portland, too? Yeah. Well, let's go see the Nagas. Okay. So you leave after talking with Deacon, probably the only time in the last couple hundred years Deacon's felt really uncomfortable in a room. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alexander. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, no, werewolves also make him uncomfortable. Especially a group of them. Yeah, there the is a whole new level of, oh my god. <laughs> and there's snakes. What the hell? Nobody said there would be snakes. <laughs> He's got to deal with it now. <laughs> all right. So you all make it to the uh, to the old uh, warehouse or the Naga hangout. It's a rundown bar in South Portland. In which last time we were here, Stoney told, tied their bikes together. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, you did. I don't know um, what you're talking about. <laughs> as you roll up, a bunch of uh, a bunch of Naga are standing outside with their bikes. They look at you all. They look at Alexander, and they they don't know what to make of you, Alexander. They've never smelled just... anyone like you. I am just fellow wear person. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's like, wear what? Um, shark. <laughs> you should... Okay, wear, fuck suddenly you, that's they, they just, they just, they just go, oh shit. <laughs> no, no, oh, I won't shit. hurt, I won't hurt y'all, We promise. will give you back that rock, okay? <laughs> No. You don't, you don't, you don't need, you don't need the other dude anymore. Like this is enough. We don't, we don't need the other the guy. Lead, the, 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 a, a guy comes out. It's the leader that talked to you, and and his eyes get really big. He's like, uh, "Hey, gentlemen, uh, I am, uh, I am so sorry for the. I did not know that you. Uh, is there anything I can get you, beverage? <laughs> Maybe just the location of the stone." 
Uh, Joey! Guy hustles out with like an ammo can. Hands it to you. Jake just slowly takes it. And and it's the actual, you, you check it's the inside? actual stone. Yeah, he checks inside of it. Okay, just like in Pulp Fiction, it glows out into Jake's face. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, we cool. <laughs> and and the leader of the Naga is like, uh, he, he's not addressing you guys, the werewolves. He's looking at you, Alexander. We good, man? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Thanks. You, you need anything? He gives you his card. You need anything? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he just puts it in his pocket. Well, we we were wondering if you if one of you would want to go to to Russia to fight the vampire we we was after. <laughs> vampire? Russia, what? What? Russia. He he barely takes his eyes off Alexander. A uh, vampire? What? I I didn't say nothing about no vampire. I'm sorry. <laughs> there was a misunderstanding. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Alexander looks back at Deacon and it's like, I, I, we don't need your surface anymore, I guess. Deacon's eyes are like dinner plates at this point. <laughs> He's like, he, he just picks up his phone. Ah, oh, Kristoff, call me a car. <laughs> I need to go home. I need to go home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So he walks past Deacon and, and says, a deal is a deal. As, like, yeah. they're leaving. I'll get you to Russia. No. <laughs> no problem. Don't worry about No. So we're not going to Russia now. I thought they wanted him dead. I mean, we have no reason now. They did, they did want him dead, but unfortunately <laughs> you brought the one thing that nearly destroyed all of the Naga in the War of Rage thousands of years ago. <laughs> oh! Well, I don't... are terrifying. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to go to Russia anymore. Deacon's like, fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> He's kind of backing away from you, Alexander. He's like, so I'm just going to go to the Starbucks and wait for my car. Like, like, are we in a <laughs> house? No. You're 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 at a bar that's in a converted old warehouse. Oh, okay. Is there is there like humans around us? No, no. <laughs> you you should, you, you should shift Alexander. And really freak him out. They're this scared of you. Jeez. <laughs> oh man. Wait. Wait, I should actually do that. <laughs> no, I actually don't, because that would be viewed as a provocation, and they will try to defend themselves. Okay, uh, okay, no, never mind. <laughs> that, that, that's like casually pulling out your, your AK-47 <laughs> after they've been polite. Um, that's what we do except Portland. Alexander's like a rocket launcher. <laughs> that's very true. Okay, so yeah, Alexander's just like... <laughs> I just need a drink now, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get him a drink. Get him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't get too many. Don't, don't give him too many. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little wild. <laughs> Jake walks in. He could he could use a boyfriend too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not cross that street yet. <laughs> Just give me a drink. I'm happy. <laughs> they they bring you a beer. <laughs> he bounds it. And you gentlemen need anything? Beverages? Uh, snacks? So... Nah, nah. Nah, this one drinks like a fish as it is. <laughs> we just there's need a, to go back to that mountain. Uh, no more stealing stones from the mountains, all right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's your territory. It looks to you, Alexander. Yeah, just just don't do it again. Oh shit! We we, we will we will ask permission next time. We <laughs> yeah, come you to better. Arcadia Bay. Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, you better. Or yeah. Else. Um, I said it takes out a paper, writes the, if he can write down his number, like if if you need anything, because you guys have been so nice. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You have you have a you have a good night. <laughs> You too. 
And then when, when they all get into the car, he just busts out laughing. <laughs> so he says, stay blessed as he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like the Jehovah's Witness exit. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we can uh, find that stag now. Well, it came to me last time. I imagine we just go to the mountain it was talking about. <sighs> yeah, that's an idea. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Deacon called Kristoff to get him a ride. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Kristoff was traveling as Deacon's assistant at the end of the last game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I kind of usually ran into him. <laughs> all right, so, yes, you all make your way to the... As soon as you get to the cabin, um, Moich, the, the deer spirit, comes out. And uh, it says to you, you have returned the heart of the mountain. I will take it back. Give him the heart. Hello? Give him the heart. <laughs> he, he, Jake just goes ahead and hands it back. Um, Moich, actually, the would you open the box? Yeah, he opens it. Moich actually lifts it in, it rises between his antlers and glows. It is glowing this beautiful silver color. I will return this. You have done well, and I give you my favor. All right, so now your totem is the stag. Nice. And basically that gives you... Once per game, a, a, a you each get a um. Uh, you will get each of you, all of you gets a free stunt, which is like I died but I got better. Hmm. So once per game, if you take um, hang on a sec. All right. So anyway, um. So basically, if you take like massive damage or damage you cannot soak or survive, you can return to life. Ooh! Wow. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Let me. Uh, let me <clears throat> put that in my so That's in. Front. That's pretty oh, cool. What? So where would you put that actually? Uh, under... One, it's once per adventure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you put it under. Let me get to your character sheet. You put it under stunts, so you stunt. add one. Okay. Uh, stunts. <clears throat> once per adventure. What's a short way of typing that? Once per adventure, return to life. Okay. What was it called? Um, I died, but I get better. <laughs> I died, but I get better. That's a magical name right there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so it's not every session, but it's every adventure. Like, you just finished an adventure. Um, so that was pretty freaking awesome. I I loved that. <laughs> not only I did I get to use Deacon. Yay. Yeah. I was so happy that about Deacon. Awesome. I was so afraid um, that, like, Stoney would attack him or something. I'm like, no, my Deacon. <laughs> No. <laughs> I was actually going to be like really sad too if he like fucking attacked him. <laughs> yeah. Once again, I fortunately I I've played enough vampire to know that even a pack of werewolves would be, and a were a rokeo would be very hard pressed to put down a vampire that old. Yay. Uh, um, and y'all got some got some lore, and when we play vampire again. Um, I'm actually going to advance it to the new 5th edition stuff where some clans are gone, some clans have changed over. Uh -huh. um, yeah, like the this followers of Set out of character. The followers of Set don't exist anymore. They are now part of the uh, um, a, a group called the Ministry. Uh -huh. 
Um, the Tremere, their Chantry fell uh, in Vienna, so they don't have their old clan weakness anymore. Um, what was their weakness again? Their old weakness was they were close to me. They were always under the thumb of the council in Vienna. Oh. But now the council's all dead. And vampires are forbidden from doing anything online. Oh. Because that's how the Second Inquisition found them. They cannot talk about vampire shit online. Oh, so that's why Shreknet is down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that you like added that to this. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, see, always, always got to have some Easter eggs and advance like further World of Darkness games. So, yeah, I, I yeah. just love Easter eggs. <laughs> so I also, I also used um, Deacon the other day, and um, yeah, I used Deacon the other day in my Mage game that set mm-hmm. in Victorian England. Ooh. Um, he was just in passing, but it was kind of neat. That is neat. I like that. I actually really like that you're like using him to your advantage here oh yeah we'll see and that's the thing is like any care anybody who plays characters i kind of keep them and use them as npcs in an expanded universe um so yeah every world of like a lot of times when you met characters from my uh in my vampire game those were characters people had played i was wondering yeah, that's, that's, right. um, that's really, that's really cool. cool yeah um actually i i ran a game like I ran like a one-off game. I used mm-hmm. all of our vampire characters. Oh, and, like NPCs, and it was pretty fun. <laughs> like particularly Kristoff, which is like so marvelous. Like I don't know what happened, but like I did roles for him, and they were just magical. <laughs> <laughs> and always with Kristoff, it's like just for some reason being insanely bouncy and and. I mean, yes, he's got a dark streak that he could really get. He can really go psycho on you. <laughs> but he's not going to let you know he's going to go psycho till it's too late. Yeah. Exactly, though. <laughs> and then, like, I was going to say, whenever I use, like, Creed or something, like, usually I like, use Creed in something because, of course, like, he's, like, close to my heart. Whenever yeah. I use Creed for something, he's just comic relief the whole time. <laughs> It's always comic relief, so just be like, he can go from being like super happy to like angry within like seconds of like yelling at people. <laughs> yes, and I used um I used Adriana too as a vampire forensics expert. Um, some vampire a vampire game I was running. Basically, they were having, you know, they had to have a trial for one of the one of the players, and so she was a witness for the prosecution. <laughs> 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 so yeah alright y'all thank you so much for playing it was so good to be back doing this yeah I had so yeah. much fun thank you yes it was a blast <laughs> alrighty so um, I will see everybody next week I it is good to feel like myself again so yeah I'm so happy to, to not literally see but like you know see everyone yeah. Share everyone. And um oh I your to share. Voices. Um, <laughs> according to my according to my doctor, I have lost fifty five pounds in a month. Oh boy. Wow. Was that um, from the gallbladder specifically? Uh, well the gallbladder surgery and then um because it had inflamed my pancreas, it had made my blood sugar high. Oh. And so what happened was and then for seven days I just didn't eat anything. I was oh. on the tastiest of the tastiest of saline. <laughs> um, and then, like by the time I was done, like after that, I I got to eat a, sa- a salad and a chicken breast. I think this was the first solid thing I ate. And the the salad that I got, I tasted the cucumbers, and the cucumbers were almost like candy sweet to me. And I'm like, oh. what? <laughs> what the crap <laughs> wow so like now I'm just eating vegetables cause it's like mmm candy hum, hum. <laughs> okay honestly I've been going through that same thing so I get it <laughs> it's like, like, pescatarian, I'm just like yeah <laughs> everything's just amazing yeah it's like okay so weird um, apparently this is, this is what we're doing now so. <laughs> alright 
it, a, okay. it becomes a tasty snack. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thank you all so much, and I'll see you next week. Thank you see so you much. Week. Week. Have a good one. Bye, you guys. Too. Bye. See ya. I'm going to go ahead and go, too, so bye. Alrighty.